If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O God of Israel. This evening we come to the Vigil Mass for this 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Mary daily. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on earth, least a people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all people a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of food rich and juicy, of fine strained wines. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord rests on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. 
If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evils would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for ever and ever. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Philippians. I know how to be poor and I know how to be rich too. I have been through my initiation and now I am ready for anything anywhere, full stomach or empty stomach, poverty or plenty. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me strength. All the same, it was good of you to share with me in my hardships. In return, my God will fulfil all your needs. In Christ Jesus, as lavishly as only God can. Glory to God, our Father, for ever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The word was made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited proved to be unworthy. Go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out to the roads and collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to look at the guests, he noticed one man who was not wearing a wedding garment. And he said to him, How did you get in here, my friend, without a wedding garment? And the man was silent. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the dark where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. I need to tell you right from the start of this homily um, that I'm something of a self-confessed foodie. And this may have also be um, of similar comfort to many of you who have got a similar disposition, especially when we hear eternal life described in terms of rich food and fine wines. Because nothing quite conjures up feelings of 
contentment and fulfilment more than a convivial meal with friends. But recall, however, that it was a bad meal that was the cause of all the problems in the world. When our first parents ate the fruit of the tree of good and evil, And throughout the history of the Bible then, it's the description of a banquet that is used to portray the healing of that rift between mankind and God. On this mountain, the Lord will provide for all peoples a banquet of rich food and fine wines, says Isaiah. So there it is in the Old Testament, longing for that union with God, expressed in such human imagery that we can relate to. And Jesus is typically the fulfilment of all of this as he sits down at table and invites everybody. Now society at the time of Jesus was even more class conscious than we are today. Everything and everyone was divided according to levels, rich and poor, clean and unclean. And Jesus overcomes all of this by inviting all those who are inside and those who are on the outside. They're all welcomed as he, the host, the one spreading out on the mountain of God, this rich banquet of choice food and wines invites them. And as a result, as a result, we are Eucharistic people because week after week, day after day, we come here to encounter Jesus and be fed by him on himself in the liturgy, in the Mass. All the dreaming and the longing of the Old Testament comes true here. That's why saints like St. Thomas Aquinas could write such lovely little prayers like that famous one which is put to music so beautifully by many classical composers, O Sacrum Convivium, O Sacred Banquet in which Christ is received. The memory of his passion is renewed. The soul is filled with grace and a pledge of future glory is given to us. I want to tell you that this Saturday afternoon in Assisi in Italy, there took place the beatification of a young man who dedicated his short life to making the mystery of Jesus in the Blessed Eucharist better known and loved. Carlo Acutis was renowned for his gift of computer programming. But even more so, how he used those skills to bring him to holiness. Carlo called the Eucharist his highway to heaven. And the other great solid pillar in his life was his devotion to the Blessed Mother Mary. From his adolescence, Carlo attended Mass and prayed the rosary daily, frequently spending time in Eucharistic adoration. He said, when we face the sun, we become tanned. But when we face Jesus in the Blessed Eucharist, we become saints. Well, Carlo died from a brain tumour in the year 2006, at the age of 15. But the summer before, just after his 14th birthday, he spent the time researching Eucharistic miracles and creating a website to catalogue and share that information with others. You can look it up online. It's called Eucharistic Miracles of the World. Because Carlo wanted people to approach the Eucharist. And for this, he used the internet. And that summer before his death, he went around the world looking for those Eucharistic miracles that had been recognised by the church from the early church to the present day. And that website explains in a wonderful way all those wonderful Eucharistic phenomena. Blessed Carlo was concerned about people growing distant from the church and from the sacraments, and he wanted to bring them back. And so from his childhood, he started encouraging people to come back to receiving the sacraments. He even managed to drag his relatives along. His parents weren't practicing Catholics. Now, normally it happens the other way around, doesn't it? Parents kind of bring their children to Mass. But Carlo managed to drag his parents 
back to Mass and the sacraments and to receiving daily Holy Communion with him. So we can seek his intercession today because when the church declares someone to be blessed, the church is saying that they're in heaven, that they can be a model and an intercessor and pray for us all here still on earth. But above all, I mention him this evening because of his great love of Jesus in the Mass and in the Eucharist. What is the saddest thing and the most hurtful thing you can do to anyone? Well, I think it's not replying to an invitation that someone extends to you and that feeling of hurt and rejection that follows on from that. What happens when God invites his people to the banquet with him? We just heard it in the gospel. They refused to come. They found excuses. You know, there's hardly a single line in the New Testament that is more tragic and sad than that line. They refused to come. Why? Because it signifies the unrequited love of the heart of Jesus Christ for all of us. The servants that he sent out, that the king sent out, were the prophets and the holy people, past and present, who summoned people to God's banquet, but who were rejected and get put to death. We have been summoned by no one other than God the Father to eat and drink in intimate communion with Jesus, his Son. Every minute and every moment, God, who pervades all things and speaks through all things, invites us to be part of him. That invitation that he gives us may take the form of these words you're listening to now, some through social media, or it might be through a podcast or a website on a computer. However we hear them, these words are inviting us to come to the banquet. Maybe it's a priest we heard say something once, or maybe it's the Bible we picked up and found a passage that particularly moved us Maybe it was a holy person we saw living in our street that we saw their life so beautiful and compelling. Or maybe it's just something as simple as a sunset on a beautiful day in which we can see God and just be grateful to be alive now. All these experiences can be God summoning me to the wedding banquet of his son. But this particular parable helps us to feel the feelings of God when he invites us and when we don't respond. Now that parable ends, doesn't it, with that startling and rather disturbing way. The king comes in and he finds someone who's not wearing a wedding garment and they're thrown out. Now the fathers, the early saints of the church, see in this the symbol of the life of Christ which is put on at baptism. That's the wedding garment. But it also reminds us of something that we, the baptised, can't forget. Yes, we have accepted the invitation. Yes, we've accepted grace. But we can fail to change. That wedding garment here stands for the transformation of our lives. It means putting on Christ. It means putting on love, justice, forgiveness of enemies, putting on non-violence, putting on the form of Jesus Christ. Because we can't come to the banquet and still remain unchanged. Mary responded to God's invitation perfectly and she ever more conformed herself to his image. In this month of the Holy Rosary, we meditate on her life with Jesus and ask that like her, we will accept what God asks, respond and become changed and transformed into his image. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Lord, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy. Heaven and earth are full of glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of Hosanna.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death he will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Carlo, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, worthy, you should enter under my roof, and only say that in my soul. For those participating in this Mass through social media, spiritual communion. I wish, Lord, to receive you now with the purity, humility and devotion with which your Most Holy Mother received you with the spirit and fervour of the saints. body of Christ.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. To remind you to access the newsletter online, please. You might like to do two things this week. You might like to, first of all, read the little instruction in the newsletter. It's there on the website about um, how to come to communion at this time and how to receive communion without getting in a complete tangle with our face coverings and so on. And you might also like to go and look up that new blessed that I was speaking about in the homily, blessed Carlo Acutis, and look at his website, Eucharistic Miracles of the World. Some very edifying reading for you in the coming week, for which I wish you a very happy week ahead and a very blessed celebration of Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.